Hello, Algebra 1 students. Welcome back to another lesson in Algebra. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to focus on how to use the substitution method and solving systems of equations. Now, the first thing I have here is a couple of scenarios where some real world problems uh, that we've created to help you figure out how to set up the different equations and then how to solve them. Because really, there's not much use in being able to come up with equations for these scenarios if you don't really know how to solve them. For all of our systems that we're working on today, they will have two variables. So you can see this example number one, there's a number of red bricks, number of gray bricks. We're always going to have two variables. If you have two variables, two unknowns, you absolutely must have two equations or else you won't be able to solve them. That's kind of like if you had three variables, if I had an X, a Y, and a Z, then I would have to have three equations listed. Now that's an Algebra 2 topic. We won't have to do that in Algebra 1. Thank goodness. Let's get rid of that. But before I show you how to do these two examples, let me set up a scenario for you. This is Hillbilly Bean. He likes to ride a lawnmower. This is Biker Bean. <laughs> He's not very nice. He likes to create mayhem. Biker Bean decides to play chicken and drive straight at Hillbilly Bean. Now, if I gave you their speed and how far apart they start from each other, you could write a system of equations to model this scenario. Uh, you are going to have a problem just like this one at the end of your packet. Now, you can refer back to that when you're working on your packet if you don't remember what in the world we were doing. Okay, so example one, here we go. Monica, she built a porch that contained two different colors, two different colors of bricks to create a nice uh, blah, 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 nice pattern. She purchased the red bricks at $2 each. So the red bricks are $2 each and the gray bricks at $3 each. How many red bricks did Monica purchase if she spent 160 on 60 different bricks? Okay, so what are the unknowns? When we read through this, she purchased red bricks. We know the cost of the red bricks. We don't know how many red bricks she bought. So that's our hint. When you don't know something, that's your variable. Now you could use an X or you could use a Y. It would make a lot more sense to say R for red and G for gray. What about our equation? How many total bricks are there? 60. So if there are 60 bricks and R stands for how many red ones there are and G is the gray ones, you just go R plus G equals uh, 60. There's one of the equations. And then the second equation would be the money, right? Yeah, so we've got $160 and they cost two dollars and three dollars so it's two dollars per red brick plus three dollars per gray brick and that's going to equal a total of 160 dollars so the money is all going to go together on that equation okay not too bad let's try the next example this one is a bit trickier and it is very similar well not it's got some similarities to the uh the tractor and the lawnmower problem that you're going to see in your packet now, when we're talking about distances and how fast something's moving, you want to remember this. I always remember, for, for some reason, when I was in high school, I looked at this and I was like, uh, dirt. And I just thought dirt. And dirt is my equation that I always set up for distance equals rate times time. I know it doesn't really actually spell dirt, but distance equals rate times time. That's important for what we're about to do. Speed of the boat. What is the speed of the boat? We don't know. A boat was traveling 145 miles downstream um, and back. It's 144 miles each way, 144 miles downstream, 144 back. The trip downstream took four hours. Trip back took eight hours. What's the speed of the boat? So we don't know. Let's put a variable B for boat and the speed of the river's current. How about an R for river? And now what is the equation? Distance equals rate times time. So what's the distance? 144 equals, what is the rate? We don't know. That's the unknown. We know how long it took us four hours, but the rate is the boat's speed and the speed of the river combined. See, they're helping each other. The river is pushing the boat faster. So I'm going to say that it's B plus R in parentheses, R being the river, B being the boat. And then what's the the time for so let me show if I can let me see if I can clarify that so this is the distance 
D equals, this is the rate, R, and this is the T, time. So it's distance equals rate times time. 144 is the distance, and you're adding them up together. So then if we're going back the other direction, it's 144 again, but this time the boat is going slower. It took an entire eight hours to get there because we're going to have to subtract the, the river's current. So that is setting up these equations. Notice that the, we're going to have on the directions that we don't have to solve these. I'm just having you practice setting these up. So remember from our last lesson, what are the three types of solutions to a system of equations? They are where you have just one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. Remember, this is has one point of intersection, no points of intersection, so they're parallel lines, or infinite solutions because the two lines are exactly the same. We're going to have the same type of answers in this lesson, but we're going to do it algebraically. So when we solve by substitution, here's our steps to solving by substitution. Step number one is solve for one variable. And not just any variable, but we want to choose the easiest variable. It's true you could solve for any of them, but we want the easiest one. I'll show you what I mean by that. Get this written down if you don't have it yet. Solve for one variable, and we want specifically the easiest. So if you look at example three, this is what I'm talking about. You have an x here, a y, an x, and a y. Which one would be the easiest to solve for and by itself? This one right here would be the easiest, this x. We don't just solve for y like we are used to with your graphing. You just choose the easiest one. So let's do that real quick. If I subtract 6y from both sides, I'll get x equals 4 minus 6y. OK, my second step, what are we doing now? It is going to be substitute into the other equation and solve. Pause right now and write that out if you don't have it written down yet. So here we go. We're going to substitute this thing in. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to change colors for just a minute to see if this helps you out to see it. 4 and then time. So I'm using the other equation I haven't used yet. I'm going back up to this one. 4 times. And now instead of an x, we're going to write down what x equals, which is 4 minus 6y. And then minus 3y equals negative 11. Uh, sorry, going off the board here. So you notice it's exactly the same equation here, but instead of an x, I'm writing what x equals. So then when I simplify this all out, I'll get 16, distribute the 4, 16 minus 24y minus 3y equals negative 11. Let's see, if I combine my like terms here, I'll get a my y's combined. That's a negative 27y. Um, here, I won't skip any steps. I might throw you off here. Negative 11. Now I subtract 16 from both sides. Negative 27y equals subtracting 16 gives me a negative 27. So then y equals 1. Divide both sides by negative 27. There is what my y equals. So the, I box that. That's part of my answer, but it's only half of it. The next thing is to figure out the x. So I can now, let's look at step 3. Plug your answer into any equation and solve for the last variable. Pause that, get it written down if you don't have that yet. So what do we mean by plug into any equation? That means we're going to plug the, the number 1 either into this equation or this equation or this equation, which I think this is the nicer one to work with right here because x is already isolated. So I think that would be the best choice. So I'm going to say that x is equal to 4 minus 6 times y, which is a 1. 4 minus 6, so x equals negative 2. There is the other half of my answer, x equals negative 2. Okay, so what I want you to do now is you're going to try example number 4 all on your own. Pause this video, go through those steps, and let's see if you get the same answer that I come up with. Alrighty, there's your answer. A should equal negative 2, and B should equal negative 4. You can go through here and see if you can follow my steps to get that right answer. The biggest problem that I would probably for C students having is making sure that this negative here distributed. Now you might have solved for a different variable, so then your work would look very different than mine. Maybe you solved for this B instead, but you got to be careful of that negative. I chose this B because it was positive in front and that made it a little easier. Okay, example five. I wanted to do one more with you before we go on to the other special cases with infinite no solution, and that is the this one's going to be a little bit different, so just kind of Bear with me here. I'll go do this pretty quickly. So solve for y. y will equal 4 minus 7x. 
then we're going to substitute it where? We're going to substitute it into that y value right there. 7x plus 4 times. Now I'm going to plug in whatever y is. So I have 7x plus 4y equals 16. That's this first equation. So what is y? It's 4 minus 7x. All right, 7x plus distribute the 4 to both of these. I get 16 minus 28 x equals 16. Combine like terms, and I get 16 minus 21x equals 16. Subtract 16 from both sides, and I get negative 21x equals 0. OK, stop here for a second. This is where I have see students almost on a daily basis when we're doing these problems. They stop, and they think, oh, it's no solution, or it's infinite solutions. No, it's not. You have not yet solved for x. Do not stop early. Keep going until that x is all by itself. What would I do to both sides? I would divide both sides by negative 21, negative 21, and then I get x equals 0. All right, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a number. x equals 0. Box it. That is the answer. And then we need to know what y equals. So we'll come back up here. y equals 4 minus 7 times 0. That all cancels. I get y equals 4. All right, so the whole point of the example number five, if you want to write yourself a note on the side like a really good student and you're giving yourself little hints, this is about making sure that when you have a zero here that you're not, you don't stop until you have solved for x. Okay, you got to keep going. Don't just stop and say that there's no solution. All right, moving on to the last two examples, and then we are finished. This first one is dealing with no solution. So if you remember, no solution is when you have a situation where the lines are parallel. So if we have two lines that are never, ever going to cross, what about algebraically what happens? Well, let's take a look. So probably the best thing here is to solve for this y. So I get y equals 4 plus 3x. If I add 3x to both sides. Now I'm going to plug it into this y right there. So 6x minus 2 times y equals 3. So I just rewrote the whole first equation. Now I plug in my y, 4 plus 3x. Uh, distribute, not just a 2, but it's a negative 2. So 6x minus 8 minus 6x equals 3. All right, now combine like terms, 6x minus 6x. All I have left here on the, on the left side is a negative 8. OK, look what just happened. All the variables are gone. You have two numbers that do not equal each other. That is so sad. It's just not true. Negative 8 does not equal negative 3. This is no solution. That is the answer to this. Obviously, that was not a big surprise because I said it was going to be. So that is what we put for our answer. And how do you know when that happens? When all the variables disappear and you have a number that does not equal the other number. Okay, so if you want to write that down on the margin, that might be a good thing. So when do you get no solutions? When the variables are all cancel out, so there's no more variables, and the two numbers that are left, they do not equal each other. All right, so infinite solutions. It's going to be very similar. All the variables are going to cancel out, but in this case, the two numbers would equal each other. So let's take a look. We solve for, let's solve for that x. That's probably the easiest. So x equals negative 5 minus 2y. Plug that into this x right there. 3 times x plus 6y equals negative 15. I like to write the whole thing out just to keep track of what I'm doing. Now I'm going to plug in the x, negative 5 minus 2y. Distribute the 3, pew, pew, negative 15 minus 6y plus 6y equals negative 15. Negative 6y plus 6y, those things cancel. All I'm left with is negative 15 equals negative 15. Yes, everyone's happy. Those numbers are correct. They do equal each other, so we say infinite solutions. Oh, I'm going to abbreviate. Solutions, because I forget how to spell infinite. Infinite solutions. So why, when does this happen? When all the variables cancel. You don't have any variables left, but in this case, they actually equal the two sides. Don't get that confused with when you have this situation right there and you're solving to get x equals 0. For some reason, kids like to say, oh, there's no solution or infinite solutions. But that's not the same as this. 
Okay, that's the end of this lesson on substitution. This skill is so incredibly important. It goes all through high school being able to do this stuff. So make sure you're paying attention. You do well in this master check. Next lesson, we'll cover a different method, algebraic method. Uh, but until then, good luck on that master check, and I will see you in the next one.